Hi again, and welcome to the Wyoming Constitution. We're going to talk about the founding of the Constitution here in Wyoming and some of the ways that it's similar and different from the U.S. Constitution. On the first page, you can see some images of Wyoming. Of course, you've got my favorite fishing spot up on Mirror Lake in the Snowy Mountains, just 40 minutes away from us on the upper left. You have the governor at um, a parade. I believe that's Jubilee Days. It may be Frontier Days. I'm not entirely sure. And then on the bottom, uh, bottom right, you've got the Simpson brothers, uh, Al and Pete Simpson, who are very notable uh, figures in Wyoming politics. So let's go ahead and start talking about the Wyoming Constitution. First of all, something you don't need to know we'll talk about when we uh, talk about civil rights, civil liberties, but Article 1 of the Wyoming Constitution has a statement of rights. Like the U.S. Constitution, the Wyoming Constitution is structured according to uh, articles. And instead of Article 1 being powers to Congress as the U.S. Constitution uh, provides, the Article 1 in the Wyoming Constitution was a statement of rights. So about the structure and content of the Wyoming Constitution, the main point is that it is very similar to the U.S. Constitution. In fact, a lot of um, what this lecture is going to be about is simply pointing out the few areas in which the Wyoming Constitution is unique, understanding that in other ways that the Wyoming government is structured by the Constitution very similarly to the, the national government. So it's also similar, by the way, to other states. How is it similar? Well, there's a separation of powers. We have a bicameral legislature. We have an executive branch. We have a judicial branch. We have a constitution that enumerates powers to all of these branches, and we have the same system of checks and balances as the U.S. Constitution. So there's not a whole lot in terms of discussing the Wyoming Constitution that to talk about that's unique in that regard. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Just know that in most ways it's very similar to the U.S. Constitution. One of the more interesting aspects of the Wyoming Constitution is that it represents a patchwork of borrowed uh, ideas. There are, in fact, very few original ideas that are in the Wyoming Constitution. We just talked about the separation of powers. We just talked about bicameralism, all of those uh, structural aspects and institutional aspects. Well, the founding fathers of the Wyoming Constitution looked around. They said, well, it seems to be working in other states and at the federal level. We should do it here. So the main point is that they simply borrowed from the United States Constitution and from other state constitutions. But the question becomes, which ideas did they borrow? This was not just some Frankenstein's monster. They actually selectively borrowed. And this is one of the more important as, uh, aspects or things to understand about the Wyoming Constitution, which is that the rights and the powers embedded in the Wyoming Constitution reflect Wyoming culture. Wyoming has a libertarian and egalitarian culture that dates back to the earliest days. Libertarianism, by the way, is a political philosophy or ideology that tends to place very heavy emphasis on individual rights. Uh, Wyoming has a culture of you know, rugged individualism. You know, you've heard the term cowboy up. That reflects that culture. And so a lot of what the ideas that the founding fathers of Wyoming uh, borrowed were reflective of this. And egalitarianism just simply means uh, an emphasis on equality, not hierarchy or not hierarchical uh, culture. And so we're going to talk about that uh, towards the end. But just to back up a second, again, understanding that they borrowed other uh, borrowed ideas from the U.S. Constitution and other states, also understand that they did it selectively. They borrowed the ideas that best reflected the Wyoming culture. So about the Constitution itself, it was written in September 1889. There were 49 delegates in Cheyenne. They uh, met in Cheyenne to draft the Wyoming Constitution. A couple of them were ranchers. Half of them had college degrees, and about 37% were lawyers. So it was a pretty diverse group. Importantly, they were not politicians, though. They had jobs, they had careers, and one of the reasons that they borrowed the ideas was so that they could get back to their families uh, and their jobs. They did not want to spend a lot of time reinventing the wheel. So they borrowed the ideas from other states in the U.S. Constitution that they thought reflected Wyoming culture. They put it together in 25 days, which is you know, pretty quickly, and then they went home to their family. And of course, we're talking about Cheyenne, so I have to make a George Strait reference here. We're going to get to the institutions later, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. But the other major difference between the U.S. and the Wyoming Constitution has to do with the notion of equality. You'll notice that 
The book we use for Wyoming politics is called The Equality State, and this is why. The Constitution of Wyoming was one of the first to actually make equality a fundamental individual right. I'm going to show you some text from the Wyoming Constitution. You don't need to write it down or memorize it, nothing like that. I just want you to sort of get a sense of how much emphasis the Founding Fathers placed on this notion of equality. So Article 1, Section 2 says, Equality for all, in their inherent right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, all members of the human race are equal. Article 1, Section 3 says, Since equality in the enjoyment of natural and civil rights is only made sure through political equality, the laws of this state affecting the political rights and privileges of its citizens shall be without distinction of race, color, sex, or any circumstance or condition whatsoever other than individual incompetency or unworthiness duly ascertained by a court of competent jurisdiction. Think about how unequivocal that statement is any circumstance or condition whatsoever. This was, again, written um, in the late 1800s. This was just a few decades after the end of the Civil War, and women did not still, uh, women at the time did not have full equality, and uh, racial minorities did not have full equality either. And so for the Wyoming Constitution to be this absolute in the statement of political rights is fairly remarkable. So one more part from the... Uh, Excerpt from the Wyoming Constitution, Article 6, Section 1, male and female citizens uh, to enjoy equal rights. The rights of citizens of the state of Wyoming to vote and hold office shall not be denied or abridged on account of sex. Both male and female citizens of this state shall equally enjoy all civil, political, and religious rights and privileges. And this is what marks Wyoming as uh, very unique in the Constitution. It, we were the first state to provide equal rights for women as an individual right. That meant that women could vote and hold office, something they could not do in, I believe, every other state, but certainly most other states in the uh, Union at that time. Women were just not allowed to do it, which makes Wyoming, for the era, a very radical document. The Founding Fathers of Wyoming, while they borrowed a lot for, uh, regarding the institutions and the structures from other states and the U.S. Constitution, this was one that they actually put in by themselves because they did not have anything else like it to borrow from. So, you know, again, I think one of the things for me, at least, that is most impressive about it is just how unequivocal the language is, how radical the idea of complete equality for men and women and equality for all citizens, regardless of race or um, other, other things. I think for the time, that was, that was very progressive, very radical. So, and I mean progressive in the colloquial sense, not in the political ideological sense. So that's the Wyoming Constitution. We'll end with the famous statue that's uh, in front of the Capitol building in Cheyenne. We're going to come back to aspects of it later in the semester as we talk about other aspects of federal government. We're going to come back and compare it to Wyoming to find out how Wyoming is different and similar with the federal government.